Um, one of the things that became apparent in our discussions is that there was no clear protocol for farmers markets. And even though the, the Board of Public Works and the Department of Public Works staff has been working very successfully for a long time with the Saturday market, um, because uh, farmers markets operate on different city property that um, comes under the jurisdiction of different boards, so the, mostly the Parking Department and the, the Board of Public Works, um, there was no place for farmers or farm market managers or, um, to get information about what is the process for getting a license to operate on city property. So um, we spent a lot of time on developing this policy. Um, so I wanted to just go through some of the highlights of it and how it would affect the board and the property that you have jurisdiction over and then see if you have any questions or comments and if you're willing um, to endorse the policy and adopt it. Um, I'm happy to you know, work with you on changes if that's necessary, too. So um, basically, in, the intent of the policy is, is to support the farmers markets in general um, and to create a unified process for all of the, the markets for all of the city property um, so that each farmers market is going through a similar process um, and that they also have um, a complete packet of information about all the potential permits that they might uh, be required to obtain in order to operate. So um, we had originally come up with a concept of creating a master license, um, but then we sort of let that go because there are two different procedures from the parking division and the city property committee to the street closing license, which is required by ordinance apparently, um, in, in favor of just having a, a city staffer be the liaison, which was going to be me. Uh, in this, <laughs> so we'll have to find an interim um, person um, until this position is refilled. Um, so that that person would basically be the person to go to to answer questions um, and to facilitate the permitting process and to coordinate amongst all of the departments and the boards and to help facilitate once a permit is issued um, to help problem solve between the markets and, um, and the city. And Terry, I believe Jim may have a question uh, at this I'm point. I'm a little concerned that we receive a nine-page document here tonight and you're looking for a consensus from the board on this. It would seem to me that we need to read the policy and I would agree. whatever questions are in our mind and then go over it and approve it or disapprove it. But I certainly agree that it's needed and everything else. I just don't see how the board is going to go through nine pages of this tonight and approve it at this board meeting. Yeah. I agree. If you need more time to review it, that's fine. Yeah. Now, I don't yeah. know how the rest of the board feels about this. These are my feelings. Well, I, would agree. I got it at, I think, 1145 this morning on my email, and I, it's a substantial document. And I can't yeah, I didn't pull mine until 2.30. To read through and, it. Yeah. I yeah. saw it on my phone, but I didn't see that. Yeah. Well, I think what Terry can also do tonight is highlight what parts that there's an interaction with the board currently on it that's addressed in this policy. I uh, see so yeah. you have some things that are highlighted on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'll go good. through the questions that Please. Um, might be issues for you uh, in terms of your current procedures and how it might be affected and, um, you know, see if there's, if that needs to change. Thank you. Okay. Um, so just going on the first page, um, you know, I summarized the purpose of it and the, the, the liaison component. Um, I wanted to point out in the last paragraph, right now, I, apparently you charge a $25 fee for the Saturday market, which is the standard um, uh, street closer, closing license fee, application fee. Um, the board discussed, you know, anywhere between $25 and $100, and there was not a real consensus from our commission, our, our committee on that. Um, what we were trying to do is create parity between the different departments, make sure we were covering as much of our administrative costs as we can, and um, to take a look at what we charge other users um, for use of city property. So that, that is to be determined. We'd like it to be a consistent policy you know, and fee between um, this department and um, city property and department office. Um, on the next page, um, 
what we are trying to do is um, identify, you know, what we would consider a valid farmer's market. So we wanted to make sure that the farmer's markets meet the, the state definition of a farmer's market um, by the Department of um, um, Agricultural Resources. Um, and then added to that, that's a baseline, and then added to that, that really we wanted the farmer's markets to be supporting local agriculture. And so uh, primarily the markets would consist of local uh, farm vendors um, that would uh, operate um, in the Pioneer Valley or within 75 miles of the market. So, you know, their thought would be some crossover of the Vermont border, but primarily it was within our region. And, and they, outsiders you wouldn't accept into the group? Or? Correct. Okay. Yeah. It's really meant to support the local economy. All right. Yep. Um, and then in addition to that, um, there was some discussion that, that up to 25% of the vendors, which is number five under eligible vendors, mm -hmm. um, would be, uh, could be non-farm vendors, um, like, you know, at the Tuesday market, you know, they have uh, some of the restaurants downtown uh, providing um, uh, prepared foods. Um, uh, there are also some vendors that are, uh, you know, make soap and they're not necessarily farmers. So those kinds of vendors would fit under that category. Uh, what we were trying to do is is to avoid um, farmers markets turning into really non-farmers markets or flea markets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so the next page, um, again, to try to support the local economy, uh, we were encouraging uh, farmers markets and, and the local business community to work together so that if, if there were non-farm vendors um, of prepared foods, that first preference would go to uh, local businesses first if they wanted the opportunity to be vendors at the market. Um, and then if not, they could offer it to um, other vendors who expressed interest. Um, with the goal of, at least, of achieving at least 25% um, of Northampton-based um, farmers. Uh, and, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, in terms of um, farmers themselves, there was also the goal to try to achieve um, local farms. There was some concern about opportunity for Northampton farms to be able to vend at farmers markets because they're pretty full. Um, and sometimes it's, it can be hard to get in. There's a waiting list. Um, so well, there was no mandate that farmers markets would um, eliminate existing vendors in order to achieve this, but that they would they would work at this as a goal over time. Can I ask a question, Terry? Yeah. So, like, if I made, if I'm just trying to, can't quite see what you're driving at here. So if I make salsa, 25% of my tomatoes would be local tomatoes? Is that the? No. Oh. No, you can, if you are, if you're going to sell your tomato sauce uh, or salsa at, at a farmer's market, and you are not a Northampton vendor, then if there was another Northampton vendor that, or a farmer that was first, that okay. was a, a Northampton-based business, they would have first preference over you. Okay. Yeah. So then, um, uh, we're also. I, I, oh, I don't sorry. want to be rude, but I'm wondering how the Board of Public Works would care about that. I mean, I'm just wondering about what you're asking us to look at mm -hmm. and. How would we have any regulatory or policy concern over that? Isn't that somebody else? Yes? I think the biggest things of this whole thing that's coming out from, on behalf of the Board of Public Works is uh, occupying the street and right. what's going to happen on the street from amplified music to mm -hmm. vending food. Yes, I think Those have is. been our, our constant critical issues that we've always dealt with. And with this policy, I think we're trying to frame so that something happened in the farmer's market, that that would be a approved thing to do and not to have a sole vendor on the corner of Gothic and State or wherever doing something by himself. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I just, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of scanning through this as yeah. you're explaining it, and I'm kind of wondering that it seems like a lot of this is for somebody else. The agriculture, yeah. Jim? I, I agree. I think, uh, if I may, uh, isn't it the intent? to have this approved by the City Council? By City Property Committee? City Property Committee, which is part of the City Council, council and would leave the Department of Public Works as not being the policeman on it. Well, I think the um, the liaison would really be the, the police 
uh, you know, to make sure that, that, the, that the policy that's beyond the street issues. Right. All we're concerned with is with, yeah. the space. Yeah. I, and that it's done Marie right. Wants to say something. Yes. Um, yes. Um, for probably 40 years now, the downtown market has been setting up on Gothic Street. And we come and go through a process here where we apply for a permit and apply by all the permits and then take it to the fire department and the police department. And we've done that for many years. And mm -hmm. and I think, I'm assuming that's going to stay somewhat the same because that's a process. I think what we tried to do on this committee was set something up if a new market wants to come into effect. And, it, and I guess you would still be in charge of just using the space. And, and essentially, the markets that are set up now really do sort of take care of themselves. They manage themselves as to what can be in them. And, you know, this was sort of a, something that would be set up if someone new came into the city and was looking to set up a farmer's market because there really was no policy in place to do that. But, um, and because we've been coming for so long and getting the permit, we sort of know what to do, but someone new coming in might not know what to do. So this was also a way of telling someone who wanted to come in and apply for a farmer's market who they had to go to and how they would approach you folks. Right. And, well, I and think the concern from the board members was we're talking about things that this board has absolutely no power over and doesn't want power over, mm -hmm. you know. So. Yeah, I th this, is, this was the tricky part is that, yeah. um, you know, because we wanted to, to offer uh, farmers markets the use of public property, mm -hmm. um, so there are infrastructure and safety concerns around that. Um, but then there are also broader economic development um, policy questions. Well, I'm, I'm and, satisfied yeah. that the role of the Department of Public Works is not going to be expanded with this policy. We're just going to have better control over our space, and the enforcement of this is uh, beyond us. Yes. So I, I, mean, I think that's what we're talking about. Sure. Yeah, we're adjudicating yeah. whether 25% yeah. rule is has been violated. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, and I just want to go on record as saying that I, I think farmer mar farmers markets are great. I, I love going to the farmers oh, markets. Oh, I agree. I think <laughs> if we could have one every day somewhere, I wouldn't go to Stop and Shop anymore, but I, I still like Stop and Shop. I don't know if they have policies. That, Come on, yeah. <laughs> that could be a policy. <laughs> that would be that I like Stop and you running for office? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I, I'm, I'm really thinking about um, I don't know how much of this we need to understand. Yeah, well, that's yeah. it. That's kind of what I was I'm looking at. Well, like can going. I go to the points then, if you if you want me to, to streamline it? There's not much more to be said, actually. Um, uh, there are two points that I wanted to, that are relevant to your existing procedures. Uh, one is under the entertainment section, um, where we're incorporating entertainment as part of a farmer's market license. So, for instance, the Tuesday market has been having musicians there um, on a regular basis. Um, and I think that Ned expressed some concern that because you have a separate entertainment uh, permitting requirement for public streets, that there might need to be some adjustment in that policy to make an exemption that if you obtain a farmer's market policy uh, permit, that that's incorporated in. Um, as part of this process, rather than needing to get a separate permit, because we are trying to minimize the number of permits that a farmer's market has to obtain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? Yes. And would you be following our regulations for um, street yeah. musicians or whatever? That we no, have I think there would be some variation, because this, this proposal allows for low-level amplification, and I think your regulations do not allow amplification. I, no percussion instruments. Mm -hmm. And I, I was concerned about that one, that low level was not defined. That was kind I, of intentional because, um, you know, we have zoning requirements that have sound um, uh, limits. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really meant, basically how the Tuesday market works out is that, um, you know, it's kind of a, a test of... A, you know, just is it working for everybody? And if somebody complains, or if if, if the market manager sees that the that the music is just really too distracting and could be a disturbance to somebody, they tell them to to turn it down. Um, and it was going to be really hard to come up with decibel levels. To mm -hmm. it was just too excuse me uh, complicated on a regulatory basis to do that. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So I, I think the issue for the board there is that you would need to revise your street positions. Permit program to make this an exempt activity if that's in fact what you want to do. Isn't that, isn't 
there's sort of an item there that you'll need mm -hmm. to address on, on your side. It may be similar to the, to the sidewalk sale days. I mean, I think they have entertainment as part of their activities during sidewalk sales, and I'm assuming that they don't get a separate permit for that under your entertainment license. Sidewalk sale yeah. days, we give them a permit to, sell to the run the whole to... thing. One permit, right? Yeah. 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 But it, it's just for putting items on the well, we'd never give sidewalks. We've right? never Actually, known that there was any entertainment with entertainment it. With it. Well, he never asked. What is it? Yeah. Don't ask, don't tell. I meant singing and <laughs> instruments playing. Oh, okay. I think it was yeah, a yeah, I think they do. Not there anymore. <laughs> right. Gary has It's a definitely comment. not part of our permit, though. Sure, I didn't tell you anything about that. No, I was his uh, chaperone. <laughs> All right, Gary, Gary has a question. Well, I just. We'll move on. It's the, the idea that there's a market manager, I think makes it a lot easier to yes. just say this looks fine right and so if it's if there if there's a market manager that's kind of overseeing this for the committee and so I like the idea of a manager a person that's maybe there all the time that can say hey tune mm -hmm. down the volume mm -hmm. that's our biggest problem I think as as a department how does the department regulate this stuff I mean we set policy but we're not patrol person. persons I'm afraid I forget your name. Maureen. 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 Um, just so you understand, too, the Saturday downtown market pretty much has a policy already within themselves that they don't do entertainment or anything other than vendors and farmers. And it's just, it's an internal policy, but for now that's the way it stands. So this would probably just come up if, you know, another market wanted to set up in the city on a street because currently right now we, we don't have space for entertainment. We want to fill those spaces with vendors, farmers. So we don't have that at the downtown market. I'd, I'd be interested in knowing what the entity is that's the manager that, that sort of organizes these markets and then is responsible to go get the insurance. How does that all work? Um, on both the Saturday and the Wednesday market, I'm not sure about the Tuesday market because I'm not involved with that, there is a market committee made up of vendors within the market. Uh, there's a president, a treasurer, a secretary. They do all the insurance. Uh, they come and get the permits that are needed from the town. And the market is basically run by this committee. There's usually one person, myself and Florence, and actually my husband does it for now in Northampton, that sort of keeps an eye on everything to just make sure that people are parking where they're supposed to, that they clear the street when they're supposed to, the street is clean when it's supposed to. So it's a committee within both of those markets. I'm not really sure how Tuesday works. The Tuesday works. market, I think, is primarily run by um, Ben James and his wife, Una, um, who run the town farm, and they're the market managers. The markets that we're talking about, you, you say these are the ones that are on town property, but the one in Florence is not town property. Mm -hmm. It's not. And the one that they're doing at the public housing on Jackson Street isn't. Correct. So we're only talking about the Tuesday and Saturday markets right now. Currently, yes. And do those other ones need to go through a permitting process? No. No, as long as they meet zoning, which they would. Um, no, there's no permitting work on because it's on private it's property. On private property. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just thinking about the uh, entertainment. I mean, we could maybe justify some relaxation because the farmers' markets never go past about four in the afternoon or five in the afternoon, do they? Lawrence goes till seven yeah. or six. On um, Saturday, just goes till one. Yeah. Tuesday goes seven. till six or six thirty, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Whereas our entertainment licenses are good till nine o'clock at night or. No. Oops, go ahead, Terry. Okay. So the other, um, the other item that might be of interest to you is just under licensing authority. So basically, we list out the three entities that could be involved, <coughs> and I listed out just so people know what <coughs> properties uh, each board or department has jurisdiction over, and that includes Pulaski Park. But Ned has, you know, uh, pointed out that Pulaski Park, you don't allow any vending in Pulaski Park. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it may be that at some point in the future, a farmer's market might come forward and propose a farmer's market um, for Pulaski Park. Um, and, you know, that might be something that would require an adjustment in your regulations in order to allow. Because your current uh, policy does not allow vending in Pulaski Park. 
But there are, like, I don't know about the energy event that happens there on, on um, Earth Day. I think they have, do they have that? mostly information. Are there any vendors there? No vendors. No food on employees. Okay. So and I actually, you know, generally I support the idea of not, I don't, I don't, uh, from an economic development perspective, I think there's a real problem and a conflict with having individual vendors using city property and competing against downtown um, businesses that pay huge amounts of rent for their space. Um, but I think there could be an argument to use Pulaski Park um, as a as a periodic farmers market space that's controlled um, and only for that purpose. There was a fair amount of interest in using Pulaski Park for a farmer's market back when we had the, the city commission on exploring the future of Pulaski Park. There was a fair amount of discussion about using it for a farmer's market type of things. So it may not require any action on your part right now. It's just for future reference that if, if an application does come through or interest in it, then it may require you to rethink that. Hmm. Or we could comment on this. You could. And, and incorporate it in as a policy. <coughs> yeah. If you felt yeah, strongly about making a decision now. Um, and then the other thing is is just um, you know a standardized application and decision form. Um, and then we attach all of the possible other permits that a market would need to obtain. Any other questions? Okay. Could I ask some non-board related questions? Sure. Okay. So I was just, in reading through it, I, was, I got the idea that there would be a maximum of seven markets because there would never be more than one on a day. Is that correct? Yeah, I guess that would be true. Okay. And so I was just curious about that. And then, um, um, no, that's all. Okay. Um, a while ago, we had a sign issue related to a sandwich sign to, to as notification for, I think, the market down behind the Tuesday Market. Tuesday Market, Tuesday market. Tuesday market. Tuesday market. right. And so that that doesn't seem to fit in here as a as a as a piece of advice on another permit that might be required if Let's sandwich see. board sign. Sandwich something. board sign. Yeah. There's something about signage. Yeah, sign yes. I think yeah. that's intended to be. At the facility, as opposed, because it's not issued by it it's issued right. by I the building can, uh, department, not by us. Yeah. Yep, you're right. I can add that. That's a good point. Thank you. Okay, I did come up with oh, another question. Okay. okay, so if two different groups come to the um, to and make an application for a new market, how would you dis what criteria would be used by to decide? Who would get this that particular day or that particular location? Well, first, if there was an existing market at that time, then they would have first preference. Right. Um, if it were if it was two new markets, then we tried to identify on page three um, the general criteria mm -hmm. for reviewing right. an application. Right. Um, again, some of those uh, are infrastructure related, public right. safety related. Right. Um, um, but then also, you know, it's, it would be looking at, um, let's see. I think, how, how well they comply with the other provisions mm -hmm. of the policy in itself. Yeah. And I'm assuming that that input would come to you from other departments. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure that that was board related for the security policy. Okay. The trick we, we were trying to do is satisfy a lot of different interests, um, try to be supportive of agricultural and, and farmers markets, um, create a process that was clear and unified without being too much of a regulatory burden. So Terry, our next meeting may get tangled up with the holidays. If we don't deal with this until January, is that going to... Uh, um, will that yeah, work? Um, I'll be here through mid-January after that, um, just not, I'll, I'll work with somebody to try to pick up um, in case there needs to be something done in the interim when I'm not here. Um, so I'll figure that well, out. That'll be a long time that you won't be here. 
Yeah, after mid January, yes, it will be. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, from the interim, by the time you're ready to make a decision, oh, right. okay. um, and uh, an identified liaison is decided. So, yeah, we'll work that out. Yeah, so no pressure. All right, great. Are you still here on January 11th? I believe I am. Yep. So, so that would be our January meeting. Concept is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think we all like it. Mm -hmm. not, so it just doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> push, pushing it back to the next meeting has nothing to do with how we feel about farmers markets. And, and I just it seems like a great idea, idea to have done this. That we, we just for thinking, um, and you know, I I think we assumed that it was probably not going to be possible because of the ordinance, but. Um, you know, the idea of this master license, again, that somebody would issue, and perhaps it wouldn't be your board. And are you open to the idea of a master license that might be issued by a staff person that would get the proper input from the different boards? But because we have this ordinance that requires you to issue a street closing permit, it adds another level of complexity to it. Um, so I just throw that out there for your thinking. Okay. The 75 mile figure, is yeah. that existing for the existing market? There are no requirements for the existing markets. 75 miles, to me, seems excessive. I mean, not the well, significantly we excessive. I think that came up because one of the, particularly the manager of the Tuesday market, was concerned about having diversity in the market, and if he wants to have, say, a dairy farmer or something, and there's someone locally who or there's no one locally who wants to do it, but he has someone who would like to come from within that area, um, then that would give him the opportunity. Some from New Hampshire, maybe. Or... Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pretty much areas. I think in Massachusetts, I th if my understanding is from the state is it really is supposed to be Massachusetts growers in a, far a local farmer's market in Massachusetts. Yeah. That comes from yeah. Massachusetts, Massachusetts Department of Ag Resources. What if, we, what if it's in the three-county area? Or, or even if you included the Berkshire? Yeah. See, David wants to be on that committee. I can see. <laughs> yeah. well, this is it, right? Yeah, the is, there might be far reaches of Berkshire County that would be just as far as Southern Vermont from but, here. But they're in so, Massachusetts. It's true. The yeah. committee went, like I say, we spent a long time on this and round and round on all the um, concerns about, again, the intent. The overall intent is to support local agriculture and local farms, um, and but also, you know, the farmers market. In order to be successful, they need to have a diversity of products, and those products may not be close by. Gary, is this um, seventy-five miles from the center of Northampton in a radius as the crow flies, kind of? Thing, or is it Get your mileage map on the car? <laughs> <laughs> or I'm, 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 uh, where I'm heading is so yes. would we, would we uh, want to eliminate somebody from Gloucester to bring their fish to our market? Well, that's more than 75. Well, I'm it's thinking it might be more than 75, yeah. but it's still right. Massachusetts. And, it's uh, too bad we could have been there at those meetings. We could have really. <laughs> yeah, now that I've said, I have no idea why you're asking these questions. <laughs> we, we actually didn't talk about that, and I'm trying to remember. Uh, we, we still settled on this. Um, and good shad. Yeah. I mean, what about Bill McKibben's hundred hundred mile diet or whatever that somebody's Bill McKibben talking about? Yeah. <coughs> All right, so we're going to all okay, read this. Thank you. This is terrific. Ron? Thanks very much. I appreciate yeah. it. I, I, I really don't want you to get the idea that I'm trying to shoot this down, because I'm not. not. I think the farmers' markets are great. I do, too. Yeah. Well, the farmers' markets have certainly appreciated all support from this organization yeah. in allowing us to set up down there for the last 30 or 40 years. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Good night. Good night. And congratulations, right? Oh, thank you. Okay, change order number one to contract 6712 to Tata and Howard for a water treatment plant PRV replacement <laughs> flow <laughs> control valve in the amount of $5,500. Oh, 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 no, it's pretty <laughs>
Hayden and Howard provided some calendars for the board members <laughs> <laughs> taking con into consideration in regard to their change order request for $55,000. Um, this is a change order um, regarding design uh, construction services related work to the uh, flow control valve replacement project up at the water plant. Um, after the project design started, there were um, some difficulties that resulted in the need for them to modify the design approach that they had based their proposal on. And they've got it outlined in here in regard to the, some of the difficulties. Um, originally, we thought it was going to be sort of pull the existing valve out and then put, put a new replacement valve in that location. And it ended up being quite a bit more complicated than that. We had to do some um, redesign of the piping that comes into the plant. Um, so that resulted in additional design work coming up with the design sheets for bidding and that sort of thing. So some of the money was related to that, um, and some of the money was related to uh, the fact that they had their project manager out during the, during the uh, construction of the project. It was a recall of the, they had to shut the plant down, the valve replacement occurred overnight. Um, because of the critical nature of the project, the project manager came out and oversaw the construction rather than sending a lower level staff engineer um, to be involved. So there was some additional cost um, incurred because of um, having, having a person uh, at a higher salary level out there overseeing the work, which we were quite thankful for at the time, to be honest with you, given the, sort of the critical nature of the project. So um, that's it. Any questions, Gary? What, what was the value of the actual replacement? <coughs> it was about 50000 We get the exact number. Mm -hmm. What size pipe? Um, 20. 42? Close to 20, doesn't it? I think it might be a 20 or a 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little pipe. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I don't remember the size, but yeah, it's like a 20 or a 24. Got a with a pair of pliers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, all in favor of approving the change order? Aye. 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 A contract of Brown and Caldwell for the transfer station permitting in the amount of twenty-five nine. Well, for the purposes of discussion. Second. Second. When the landfill was closed, um, the drop-off center that we have out there right now um, will require <coughs> its own permit to continue operating. So we're allowed to operate the transfer station at Glendale Road sort of as a part of the landfill operating permit. So when the landfill's closed, we need to go through and have permits specifically for the operation of, of that transfer station. So um, this contract with Brown and Caldwell um, is to help us get a site assignment permit um, that's needed for the transfer station there. Uh, has it been a decision that that would stay open? It's a recommendation of the Solid Waste Task Force that that transfer station remain open. Okay. How long does it take to uh, get the permit? Um, I was just checking to see if they had a timeline in here, but um, it might take four or five months. And, and the landfill will be formally closed as of? the latter part of 2012. But it's full. MJ? Well, no, I, I was wondering if we if we need to answer this question now, you know, sort of as you were saying, uh, until, until, until we have a totally clear view of what we're doing. I think you risk not having the permit if you want to keep it open. Uh, because this isn't the only permit that's necessary. There are subsequent permits that would come after this permit is issued. So we feel like starting the permit process now is the appropriate time to make sure that the permits are in hand when the landfill closes to be able to continue running that Glendale Road Transfer Station. Otherwise, you run the risk of needing to shut down for some period of time. What are some of the other permit problems? That's yes. my question. It's sort of followed. Have we made a decision of what we're going to do? And I think that it was a recommendation of the committee, but we've never moved forward and made a decision about what we're going to do. And it feels uh, imprudent to start expending money 
without getting a good handle on what we think our plans are going to be, because I don't know that we can afford or want to afford to keep both sides open. And can you expand a little bit more about the other permits that would be necessary and any sort of cost estimates that might be? There's a, this is, so this is a, um, this is sort of a, uh, an interesting permit in that the application goes to the state, but ultimately it's the Board of Health that issues the, uh, that issues the permit, sort of a state and local combined permit. Local Board of Health. Local Board of Health. Um, another permit that would be necessary would be um, an authorization to operate permit. Now that, that's a state level permit that, that you, uh, the city would get through DEP. Um, there's a proposal right now on the state level to make small drop-off centers like this um, permit by rule, which means that you submit something to the state saying we're going to run this drop-off center and that's really all you need to do. There won't be any, you know, it's a very straightforward process, um, which would mean that we wouldn't really need to get a permit. We just need to notify them that we have, you know, a drop-off center and this is what we're doing and send them some basic information and that, that would be all that would be necessary. So that's, that's a change that's in the works on the state level. We don't know. It's been proposed by the commissioner. We don't know if that's going to end up being adopted or not. <coughs> and we might know that when? Might we know that in time for it to affect how we permit this site? Yeah, I mean, it would hopefully within, you know, ask DEP when they're going to make a decision on that. I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're reorganizing the department, so it's, I can't really speak for that. So that's why the assumption is that we'll need to get a permit there's a chance that we might not need to, yeah. whatever. Um, I guess I'm, a, I'm trying to sort of lay out in my head what's our game plan and what it might look like in terms of if we kept both sites open, what sort of permit. We wouldn't need any sort of permit to keep this one going because it's open and operational, yeah. but the transition up at Glendale would require that we do some engineering work, site assignment, a series of permits, any capital investments beyond the closure? Not unless the board wants to make any changes out there. It would be really helpful to see a bit of a road map on how to get that. You know, what are the what needs to. Uh, so, with the with the solid waste task force, there was a there was some planning that was done as part of the discussion with the task force. We had identified sort of operate. We we wanted to answer basic questions like what uh, what would the cost be if we kept both transfer stations open. We had made some assumptions about the days of operation, what the cost levels would be, and then sort of back that into what an approximate fee would be to keep these facilities open. And the task force, I think, made their decision in part based on that information. It said the fee is going to be about this amount. This facility would be open so many days a week at Glendale and so many days a week here at, uh, at Locust Street. So it was sort of a, a, a balance um, with preliminary costs that were done to identify you know, the necessary fees. For them. And did those fees have the assumptions of these costs in them? The site assignment. No. No. And what happens if the solid waste task force decides four months from now that they're going to go with a citywide pickup? They don't exist anymore. They made their series of recommendations. They don't exist anymore. That oh, committee right. doesn't exist anymore. They made so what their happens recommendations if the department and, but or, it's, it's or us, the mayor could yes. come, come out with a new task force that would make that decision. Well, I think it's us, as you say. The, the recommendations we, were made to us and we accepted the recommendations. And then the question I had a couple months ago is how are we going to start implementing these recommendations? Yeah. And we've been working on the reuse center piece of it, but the, the, you know, um, in asking about what happens with continuing transfer station operations, this is really the sort of the first identification of costs and process to do that. Mm. You're welcome to table it if you want. You know, I can provide more information about the process. Or... I suspect that it once Jim pulls together a timeline of all the permits that that um, we'll need most of a year to, to go through the permitting process. So I'm not oh, I believe so. I'm, I'm not sure we have the luxury of of waiting until this board or some other entity in the city decides whether or not to keep that facility open as a transfer station. Mm -hmm. I think by the time that decision gets made permanently, it, it may if if we haven't done anything, I think we'll be too late. Mm 
Yeah, you, you may be very right. Could it wait until January? Like Which would give uh, give us a few weeks to kind of at least sketch out a, a roadmap. Gary, I, I always thought that the, uh, the the Glendale Road transfer station would be the place where we would expand uh, recycling because there's land, and I don't know if that requires if this permit would allow us to do that. By right, because it's a transfer station, and right now we're transferring trash and recyclables identified as glass, metal, plastic. But it's also where we have leaf refuse and, and large uh, scrap metal, right? Uh, and and there's also the barn that where you can leave TVs, uh, tires, all that stuff goes there. So, would this permit allow us to line up another row of dumpsters and take uh, C and D separated? You know. A dumpster for drywall, a dumpster for, and we actually have clean wood. We have, mm -hmm. I don't know what else we have up there. Well, I think the idea on the approach at this point would be to um, would be to structure the permits based on what we do right now. Yeah. Um, but once you have a permit for everything that we're doing right now, it becomes a pretty simple matter to change, you know, to make minor changes to the types of things that are collected for recycling or whatever the case may be. But behind me. Oh. Oh, go ahead. Might it make sense to keep the, it, you know, it, it seems to me, just in terms of the staffing and gatekeepers and the, that cost, it makes sense that if we're going to consolidate, if we might consider consolidating into one transfer station for the city, how do we make the choice between the Locust Street site and the Glendale Road site? And shouldn't we be making that decision now if we're doing site assignment work? Or are we just talking about, because it always seems like this transfer station, while it's centrally located and convenient, has is much more space constrained than Glendale would be. Right. Right. We're always kind of hoping the place down the hill. Only if we don't get the DPW down the hill. But that was in the back, I think, of everybody's mind that that if that piece of property becomes available to us, which I understand it is, uh, that we would expand our, our big reuse center down there and uh, most everything in the recycling and move what we have up here out of here because it is definitely a uh, hindrance upon the DPW and their movement in the area. But that could be many, it could be many years. Yeah, it could be. I, just, I don't know what what's going to happen down below. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm sort of torn because I don't want to reinvent the wheel and the, and the um, task force did bring up all these questions before and we did talk about it. But at the same time, we, and, and I also agree with the fact that it may take this long to do the, that process, mm -hmm. but it does It just occur to me that if we did go to citywide pickup, you know, which was the, the task force leaned in that direction, you know, let's just okay. do this now and then maybe later on, depending, we might go. So there was that. And it's sort of like, well, okay, I just want to know a total cost. So maybe it's, we're investing $60,000 in order to line up our, our Glendale Road transfer station. Not a bad, not a bad investment, but if it's going to be six hundred thousand dollars, I guess I would want to have a better roadmap. Yeah. Yeah. How did we get from twenty-five to sixty? I guess oh, that's yeah, that's speculative. Speculative. Oh. Yeah, because of he well, needed a state, a state, um, this is the and a local permit. board of health permit, and the state DP. I mean, an authorization those, to operate. Three, those are three just permits. sending a letter to somebody. That's not an engineering study for that. Well, it won't be sending a letter unless it won't be sending a letter to DEP unless they modify their uh, their regulations, which is something that the commissioner is looking at right now. The permit <coughs> rule, right? right. That nothing that we can bank on having happen. That's correct. I would assume I would run with the assumption that a permit application would need to be put together, which includes a plan and an operating report and some yeah. other things. So take, and that's what this covers. It does not no. cover that. No, no. it's just been the first step. Okay. So that's how we got to the 60 that's or maybe 600. 60. Yeah. Well, I don't I have a deal. Well, I, I don't know. I'm just right. saying. We have no sense of scale. So there might be some way to use uh, the next three weeks to firm up some of that. Sure. 
Second. So, uh, make a motion that we table exactly. the Brown Call transportation permit. So, all in favor of tabling this question for the moment? Aye. Aye. Uh, change order number three to contract 267 11 for the Bradford Street pumping station uh, to deliver on Schultz Corporation, the amount of zero point zero zero dollars Move approval twice. So, this is another um, no cost change order with Schultz Construction on the Bradford Street Pump Station. Um, this purpose of this uh, change order is, is to change the, uh, the completion date for the project uh, beyond uh, the original completion date that was uh, that was in the contract. How much? Um, we're adding uh, 33 days for the final completion date. And mm -hmm. allowing them a shutdown um, in the winter time um, from December 24th through April 15th. And so the contract, our, so the contract time won't won't be applied to that period. Will our existing facilities handle it? Well, I think we're going to be up and running by we'll, we'll be up and running in uh, by Christmas time. Okay, you just so, won't have the punch list items. Right, punch list, site restoration, okay. some fencing, paving. Yeah. Those are the things that will be done in the spring. Okay. Up and running, but then a passive, uh, but the close will be just closed down for construction. Right. So basically what's going to happen is the uh, all the pump tests and getting the new station up and running will happen this month. But then the punch list items and then site restoration, paving, warming and seeding, those things won't be able to be done until April. Right. So this just this just extends the contract term oh, that sense. allows them to, to do those things in the spring. Okay. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, request for permission to occupy Pulaski Park on Monday the 19th and uh, until Wednesday the 28th to place the annual menorah in the park. Also on Wednesday the 21st between 6 and 8 to have a public menorah lighting by Shabad Lubavitch of Northampton. Move approval. Second. So, uh, permits or? Everything's in order. Um, uh, insurance is here. Waiver fees were not requested. They paid the $200 for the Academy concurrence. Um, it's the annual issue every year. Could we have a lowercase O on Occupy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't <know> that too. <laughs> <laughs> Person all of the year, the protester. <laughs> all right, all in favor of granting this permit? Aye. 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 Solid waste update. Uh, I'm going to leave. I've got to, I want to go to the charter okay. meeting. Great. Thanks for coming. Just going down. Oh, do you want to sign sign these before you go? Do you have a moment? No, no, no. Okay. 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 We had a fabulous toy exchange on Saturday. It was a, a wonderful repeat of a great success that we had in September where we had a lot of volunteer and a lot of good energy and it was a great turnout. Yeah. And uh, then the other piece though is, is that the committee is working and is concerned that we not um, dally in terms of acquiring the mass DSP site next door because there's some real interest in seeing if we can get the reader center. Thank you, dear. Thank you. We're Thank talking you. about putting together a letter that will encourage the Board of Public Works in the city to move forward diligently on uh, closing closing that transaction. We've got our eye on it. Can we ask uh, what, where that you think so? that's at? Well, we have a mayor-elect, which is not the previous mayor, who really wanted to take possession of the property. And uh, um, Mayor-elect Narkowitz hasn't made a decision whether or not he believes the city wants to go that route. Okay. So uh, hopefully in January, I've had a call from Al Stegman at Mass DOT, wondering what the status of it is. And I told him it's just going to have to wait for the new mayor to get settled in with the new city council, because they're going to have to end up approving it. Can you make reference to some liabilities that we've been uh, taking on at the appropriate? Can you 
Can you elaborate sure. that on? Uh, number one is that um, the building needs to be demolished. It's a <coughs> usable facility at this point after years of uh, non-maintenance of it. There is a solid waste facility that needs capping. Um, it's not like a landfill per se, but more um, catch basin cleanings, street sweepings, brick and mortar, concrete, kind of the dumping yard they had there for years. The state has ordered them to cap it. As part of the release deed, that would be our responsibility to take on that obligation. Um, and of course with that, there's potential 30 years of post-closure monitoring on that site also. Um, the city has already uh, set aside the money to buy Mass Highway or Mass DOT a new salt shed. Their existing salt shed sits right in the middle of the parcel that would be most usable to us. So through uh, the Salt Lake Enterprise Fund and the Capital Improvements Funds two years ago or three years ago, that $150,000 was set aside as part of that acquisition also. So technically the property comes at zero dollar, but we have to uh, buy them a new salt shed and we also have to take on the outstanding obligations of the site right now. Okay. So it's kind of a zeroed out, but what we don't know is what long-term liabilities might be out there that we're unaware of. Do we have an estimate of what those existing known liabilities might be? Um, their appraiser came up with that. I believe the site he appraised at about $360,000 and it got zeroed out through all these different pieces of work. I believe their cost, they estimated for closing the facility was $110,000, which is a, a cap that they would choose. We might want to do something different to make the site more usable to us rather than have a uh, an earthen cap out there, we might want to pave the area so that we could have parking on it, some other use of the site also. So because of that, there might be other costs incurred above and beyond their closure costs if they were to continue ownership of it. All right, so the matter more or less rests at the mayor's office. That's correct. Okay. So, well, the reuse committee will want to bring a letter to the board and get the board's um, reaction, but it sounds like it might be important for us also to get this letter into the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. To everybody. I mean, the other thing that we are looking at right now is we're looking at utilizing the site for stormwater management for the DPW facility upgrades. Yes, yes. If that doesn't yes. happen, we're going to, have to take care of or manage all stormwater on site probably through a series of underground cisterns mm -hmm. and chambers, which would be much more costly than uh, above ground uh, detention ponds. Mm -hmm. And were you planning to use the site at all for staging area for the construction here? No. Okay. Not at this point. Okay. But you were, there was thought that the trend, I'm missing Jim, but the transfer station itself would also move down there. We would like to see it off this site mm -hmm. um, just because of the traffic flow and the need to mm -hmm. do our own work here and not have, I mean, we have a number of accidents every year where we're back into the garage and the people are coming in here and we, people aren't paying attention, we end up backing into them. So there's, there's problems with having this really heavy use here on this site mm -hmm. and with our garage, our main garage base sitting right there in front of it. Um, where I'm going with this is that if we, if the transfer station did move down there and we did have a, a reuse facility um, off the top of your head only, um, do you think there's room for both facilities? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so MJ, does that conclude the solid waste update? Yeah, unless you want some toys. No, no, that's good. good. <laughs> oh, there were toys left? Uh, there oh, were very yeah. little. Yeah, very little. Right. It was yeah. a, it went really well. Yeah. And Jim, nothing, nothing from the landfill? Okay. And then, well, except for the leachate treatment. Yeah. All right. But it's all item. Sweet. All right. I just wanted to talk to the board briefly about this uh, leachate plant decommissioning to bring, to bring the board up to speed on, on that progress in that project. A little while ago, the board had signed a, a contract with Wright Pierce Engineers to um, 
decommissioned the building, and as that project was kicked off, um, we had a decision to make about what to do with the building in terms of demolishing it or, or renovating the building by putting a new roof and heating systems and that sort of thing um, that's necessary. And, um, we had some questions about what the long-term use of that building might be and whether there was a need for it. Um, e either alternative, decommissioning or demolishing, is about you know, an $800,000 project. So it's a fair amount of money. It's a project that we need to do right now. Um, and we had some, a little bit of uh, input from uh, from Terry and Gary, and we ended up setting up a meeting out at the Leachate plant. Ned and I, uh, Dave Valletta, met with Dave Conrance, the mayor-elect, um, and uh, Council of Barge to, to talk about it. And Susan Wright. Oh, and Susan Wright, the finance director. To talk about the building, the need, the need, potential needs for the building. And what came out of that discussion was that there is a there's a strong need for a storage space within the city to store files that were required by law to retain. Um, Dave Pomerantz um, said that there was a number of departments that needed to have a location for storage of things that didn't necessarily need to be accessed that frequently. So it's sort of a remote location for storage, but seems to fit in well with the need for that type of uh, for that type of storage. So it was agreed that um, there's a the anaerobic digestion room, which is one of the rooms um, in the leachate plant building, would be a, a great location for file storage. It's a big square room and could be fitted once the equipment's taken out of there with shelf space and things. Um, so it would work out well in that regard. There's also a couple of equipment bays in there um, that have uh, room for seasonal uh, storage of seasonal equipment. And again, Dave Pomerantz is suggesting that you know, lawn mowers, snow blowers, whatever seasonal equipment could be stored in there. Um, and that makes sense as well once the building is decommissioned and the treatment processes are removed. So the purpose of the memo and the, and the figure that was attached was basically just um, to memorialize the meeting <coughs> and, and our understanding with Central Services that uh, the bill, we're going to rent it, the, the DPW is going to take money from the Enterprise Fund to decommission the building, reestablish the shell, put a new roof on it, take care of everything to make it a, a stable, good, usable building. That building will eventually be the responsibility of central services to build out the storage or whatever the future needs are, which will be sort of non-solid waste needs, will become you know a project for the city to undertake. So we've identified a great use for the building. We're happy that um, there is a need in any use for the space because the building itself, other than needing a roof and a couple of other things, actually is in pretty decent shape. Right. Will there be any tit for tat from Central Services for providing the storage space since we're taking the money out of the enterprise fund? You know, we hadn't uh, we hadn't discussed that in the meeting. The, that meeting was more focused mm -hmm. in on potential use, but I think there probably needs to be a discussion about how an asset from the enterprise fund gets. Um, transferred over to the city entity. Especially if we're going to put in $800,000 in on top of it, which is my understanding. Well, as Jim explained to us um, separately, but demolishing the building would also cost that much. has yes. its own expenses. Yes, right. Simply fixing the roof and putting in a heating system turns out to be right. about the same cost. Yeah. I understand. I just was thinking. The conversation I had with Dave Hunt of Central Services is that once we did all that, also <coughs> the Solvers Enterprise Fund would not be involved in the building anymore. They'd be a city yeah. building. They would need to take care of the heat right. and all of the electricity and all yeah. the other issues associated with that. Right. What would you like from Central Services? <laughs> future use of this lawn. space. I was thinking reuse facility if we needed to, that they would help us with the We'll still use, will we still be using a portion of the building to operate the leachate um, pump station? Just the generator room. Generator room and the same electric service that this building uses will use. And how will we have restrooms with no water? Just going to rest. <laughs> What's that about our habitat sites? Well, because no one will be working. <laughs> <laughs> Leachate. 
<laughs> because none will be working in the building and it will be used for cold storage. Uh, Central, for, Central Services was suggesting that there was no need to maintain the facility there. So we've also worked with the ESCO uh, through Central Services about decommissioning this building also and the energy savings. And one of those recommendations was to basically mothball this building and drain the water out of the system and therefore you'd have minimal or no heat at all inside the building. Oh. Right now it's about $25,000 a year to provide heat and electricity into that building. Wow. And if we didn't provide that, then the same thing that could happen that happened with the building down in the uh, state side, where it all sort of rotted out. Well, the problem with the state building is that when they turn off electricity, the sump pumps in the basement wouldn't work, sump which pumps. is where the wooden pylons are supporting the building, yeah. which filled with water and rotted away. Okay. Any action required? Mm -hmm. And the um, central services will at some point get back to us and with the quid pro quo. <coughs> Gary, anything we missed? I don't know. Yeah, I think. All right. Thanks about that. Mike? Nothing. Do you want to report on our meeting this morning? No. No. Uh, tell them it was about the stormwater report, so there's no mystery. <coughs> uh, just curious if we're not, we're going to have a meeting on the 28th of the month or not. I, I would say no. Where, where do you come down on this? Report? That's all with me now. Uh, <laughs> you know, she's been around. She knows uh, how things go around here. Uh, we, we haven't had it. We usually never have it. Mr. Huntley won't be here. I will not be here. Oh, well, then what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> the other uh, thing we put on the radar screens, I believe in January or February, we started looking at chairman, co chair, who's going to be on what committees oh, that yeah. uh, by charter, not charter, but by ordinance that we're on, such as Transportation Parking Commission, Tree Committee, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Well, Dave's going to be moving to the uh, Farmers Market Committee. <laughs> How many people are on the committee? <laughs> well, oh, no, I just, in all fairness, oh, okay. Well, I just in all fairness, they did ask us to, to be on that committee when it first opened up. Did they? they well, somebody called me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we we didn't get the call. Also. Well, you're right. Uh, I assumed it was because of my formal affiliation with the DPW. Okay. Uh, or your personality, or could be anything. No, 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 I, I wasn't saying that, but I mean, I'm, I don't know. Anyway, it's done with. All right, MJ? Okay. No? What's that, David? I, I do have a mystery. Great. Okay, so Barry was, Barry was walking on the hospital grounds, and there was some big DPW equipment working there. Uh, in the hospital grounds that is on the far, I would say, western part, and there was a lot of equipment working there, and he, then I didn't really, really didn't understand it, and so he came over and showed me the holes. And so the only thing I could come up with is maybe there were some new operators that needed to practice. This is on the state hospital grounds? Well, or maybe the they... Of Smith Smith Moe. Smith Boat. I would say by this time it's Smith Boat, right? We were dropping off leaves there, uh -huh. and our equipment got extremely stuck. Oh, water, high water table. Yes. Okay, now we know. So, rather than risk a vibration, excessive vibration, and ruin pipes. Okay, good. All right, now we know. Thank you. Yes, it, um, we got in there and um, got buried rather quickly. And yeah. It took quite a bit of equipment to get it out. Yeah. All right. I'm Thank all set. I move, I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.